Alrighty, what's going on, Neverwinter? What's going on, YouTube? It's Garland here. Today I wanted to discuss my Scourge Warlock build. I am Damnation. It's currently mod 9. A couple months it'll be mod 10, which will still work as long as they don't decide to nerf anything. Let's jump right into this, alright? As far as your race, I would suggest going Tefling. Uh, if you have Dragon Board, it's also very valid, but for Tefling, yeah, it works well just with the, uh, uh, general powers. Uh, you get your, um, Blood Hunt, you do a 5% damage increase to targets below half health. Can't really pass that up, it's not bad. And then your Infernal Wrath, which, uh, has a 10% chance to apply Infernal Wrath. And it reduces the target's power for 5%. So the Tefling is very uh, good choice, per se. Let's move on to the gear. Now the gear, it could be a few different ways. This is the way that I choose. Like, keep in mind this video will be all opinionated. This is my build, and I feel that the uh, Soulbinder uh, Scourge Warlock Damnation build is the best option for any Warlock. A lot of people will argue and say that the Fury does more damage, and we will explain the differences between both and why I think Damnation is the best. Now as far as gear, your best in slot is going to be the Elemental Dragon Flight. It's your head, your arms, and your feet. Uh, you were going to want to put reinforced critical strike on that. Uh, you could also put um, power on it. I prefer the, the critical strike because I lack the critical strike that I need with this build. So I have the added critical strike on my armor. So that's uh, 800 critical strike just in reinforcements. Utility slots, uh, they're not going to matter. Uh, we'll get into enchantments here in a little bit, but for the gear, so you're going to want your Elemental Dragonflight. Uh, for your weapon, you definitely want the uh, Twisted set. Um, you want to equip it with the increased damage done by Essence Defiler. Now you can swap Essence Defiler with Hand of Blight if you want. Uh, but I like the 8% damage increase to Essence the Fowler. That would be my choice. Now for your offhand, you want to go with Action Point Gain. And the class feature I use is Dust to Dust. So up to 5% more damage per, per spark. So you get 5% total when you're full sparks. Um... As far as your three piece, uh, the Lost Moth set is nerfed. Um, I still prefer it overall currently. So, your three pieces you know, your neck, your belt, and your artifact. Uh, unfortunately, everyone seems to think that the Orcus set is going to be best in slot for the Warlock. Um, my argue is that when you get to my item level, which I'm 4.1, soon to be, you know, 4.2, almost max item level. Uh, the Orca set is going to give me about 10% mm, damage increase overall, most likely. Uh, but the Orca set also has deflection on it, on every piece, so I'm going to lose over 2,000 armor pen. Um, and I just simply can't lose that armor pen. Something attacking me? Freaking guy's trying to train me. Anyway. So I can't lose the armor pen from losing the Lost Moth set. I may switch to the Orca set to try it and to test things out, but as a peripheral preference, just for me, the armor pen's more important than the 10% 10 damage increase that I would get. Uh, your certain trousers, you just want to get anything with power, crit, and armor pen, whatever's uh, item level 145, so the uh, elemental shirt, uh, the elemental pants, no big deal there. Uh, let's talk about um, enchantments real quick. Uh, for your weapon, I do prefer the uh, Transcendent Vorpal over the Transcendent Dredge. Uh, the Vorpal does 50% crit severity on everything, and I actually do a lot of DPS with my at-wills, whereas the Dredge, the Dredge will only work on your encounter powers. 
Uh, if you go Fury, maybe you would go to the Dread. But as far as Damnation, I stick with the Vorpal, and it works wonders. Um, I do have Radiant 12 and Radiant... Or, I'm sorry, Radiant 12 and Azor 12 in my weapon. That's uh, Power and Crit. Uh, as far as all my other enchantments go, I do stack uh, Power on everything right now. Uh, the rings, just since we're hovering over it here, I do have Rising Precision plus 4 and Rising Power plus 4. I would eventually like to get the plus 5s of the Suddens. Um, even if I got a plus 4 of the Suddens, the Suddens are always better than the Rising. You get the uh, 4,000 crit and 4,000 power up front for 30 seconds rather than the 115 crit times 10 for 4 seconds. So it's... 1,150 constantly, or you get the 4,000 every 30 seconds. Uh, I would definitely like to get the sudden rings. It's just, you know, RNG in this game. You know, I can't get a plus five and I can't get the two rings that I need, but uh, I will be stacking power on those as well. Let's talk about the artifacts real quick. Your main artifact is going to be the Will of Elements. Why? Because you get a 30% damage bonus for 28 seconds. As Mythic, I can cast this every minute, every 60 seconds. Uh, so basically, there's only a 30 second downtime in between casts. I'm always going to have 30% damage uh, every 30 seconds, basically. Uh, I do swap this out with the Sigil of the Devoted sometimes, but I don't have a problem uh, with my AP generation. Uh, so I'm constantly using the will. Uh, for your secondary, you're going to go with the Than Book of the Dead. Uh, no brainer here. 1,000 crit strike, 1,000 armor pen, uh, 600 action point gain. Uh, the Lost Moths, uh, just because I was running the set, uh, 1,000 power, 1,000 armor pen, 600 control bonus, which is useless. And also the TM at Orb is uh, 500 to each crucial stat, plus another 600 action point gain. Uh, this build is solely based on your AP gain. You want to be popping your Tyrannical Threat as often as possible. Uh, same thing with any Fury build, but as far as this Damnation build goes, yes, action points are important. As you'll see, the, my other reinforcements on the neck and the rings and the belt are action point gain. So action point gain, action point gain, action point gain, and action point gain. Let's take a look at my stats. Currently, I'm sitting at 27k power and 14k crit. Uh, this is all unbuffed, of course, right now. Uh, armor pen is well over the cap of 6k. 6k is the soft cap. I'm at 6600. I can't afford to lose a little bit of armor pen, but uh, unfortunately, I can't lose the 2000 that I would be losing from the Lost Moth set. As you can see, I do have 2,100 action point gain. I'm not joking when I say my action point gain is high. It My AP refreshes fairly, fairly quick, even without a haste cleric. Defense is only 4.2. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, my life still is 10k, which brings us down here to I'm only a 59% crit chance, but once my bondings proc and my ring procs and everything else, this gets up to about 85% with this build. 67% uh, resistance ignored. Uh, like I said, 11% action gain. Uh, damage resist is 14% right now. And the only other thing we got to look at. Okay, so here we go. My life still is 27%. This bumps up well over 30%. Uh, this build is very tanky. I rarely die with this build. Uh, between the life still and the build itself, you're virtually unkillable. You will do a shit ton of DPS and you're not going to die fairly often unless you get uh, ganged by like 20 different mobs or something. Then, you know, no one's going to survive that most likely. I did forget to mention as far as my uh, armor enchant, I did want to show that I am rocking a transcendent negation um, which is just you can't you can't pass that up either so if we look at that you know it's three percent damage resistance um, every time you get hit uh, and it stacks up to ten times so that's thirty uh, percent damage resistance right there um, as far as all my defense slots I forgot to mention that yes we are going life still so that's another reason that this um, build works so well. 
is that it's high damage, but it has very high survivability. This is why I enjoy this build more than going Fury. Uh, Fury, you're going to die nonstop. Uh, to run Fury, you have to rely on your support characters. I can solo stuff, whereas a Fury will struggle to solo stuff. But once you give a Fury a uh, buff debuff cleric and a guardian fighter, then yeah, you're going to see high numbers with the Fury. Uh, but I still do high numbers even without um, support. I mean, support short sure, does help, you know. I'm not going to diss on support, but Fury is basically a glass cannon. If you enjoy playing that, then by all means, please do. Let's go to your statistics. Fairly, fairly easy. You want to stack your constitution and your charisma as high as possible. Uh, mine, I, I believe my base was 16 and 16, but I can't remember offhand. For, I've re-rolled numerous times. Every time you re-roll, your statistics also change. But basically, you want to stack uh, Constitution, which is bonus damage, and you want to stack your Charisma. So that wraps it up with the gear and statistics, I believe. We're going to cruise on over to your powers. Nah, we're going to actually go to feats next. Take a good hard look at this. Start off, we got uh, one point into en Energizing Kirch, which is a 6% more action point when you have Cursed and you're using your at wills. Uh, the only reason this point is here is because you need 6 points to move on to the next tier. Um, I would much rather have this point over here. So let's see, uh, we got 3 into Critical Chance, no brainer here, and 3 into uh, Max Hit Points. Next tier over, Empowered Rituals, your encounter powers deal 6% more damage, absolutely. Uh, some people will take, um, put a point in here as Shadow Slip, uh, yeah, not needed, not needed at all. And also the uh, less threat, yeah, you're not going to need that anyway. Chances are you're going to be doing so much damage that uh, you're going to out aggro the Paladin and the Guardian Fighter most of the time. Um, and your survivability will kick in anyway, so you're you're not gonna have a problem. Moving on to the next tier, we're going five out of five with determined casting, which is 10% uh, for encounter cooldowns. Uh, you could also put two points into here and three points into soul reaping. Uh, if you put three points into soul reaping, you're gonna gain another 1,100 uh, life still. Um, but at the stage of the game where I'm at, I just didn't need that much more life still like i said i'm already at 30 percent uh this wasn't needed um maybe your character does depending on where you're at where you're starting but you ultimately want to go five out of five and determine casting eventually uh the faster your cooldowns the faster more spells you can get out the more dps you're doing uh last here we got the uh devastating uh critical which is a no-brainer here 15 percent crit severity you cannot pass that up and then I also have two points into the Blood Pack, which is 2% uh, more damage from your constitution. Uh, if you do decide to make a human instead of a Tefling, you could put your extra three points into either Blood Pack or your three points into here. If you play a human, a uh, human does get the three extra feats. Uh, some humans... You know, as Warlocks do well, but I prefer the uh, racial features for the Tefling. Okay, let's move on to the Damnation Tree. We are going to take Parting Blasphemy, 5 out of 5. Uh, cursed Removed, you do 6% of your weapon damage. This isn't a very big DPS jump, but it does help. Uh, we take that over Relentless Curse, so we, we don't want anything to do with Lesser Curse. Uh, second tier, moving along, the Spark Binder. The Fire Spirit summoned by Immolation Spirits now lasts five seconds longer. Uh, this is important as your other daily is going to be Immolation Spirits. Uh, you're going to be casting Tyrannical as much as you can, but sometimes when you're clearing trash mobs and you know they're going to die fairly often, you might just want to pop your spirits. Well, the five extra seconds actually does help. You're going to take that over uh, Siphoning Curse. That just heals... 100% uh, for your weapon damage after a cursed uh, target is killed. Uh, I don't really need it. You got enough life still. It's not going to help your teammates out that much at all. Uh, we're not going to take Mocking Spirit. Uh, your Soul Puppet is already going to do enough threat 
uh, and chances are you're going to out aggro your soul puppet anyway. He becomes a secondary DPS. So a thousand more threat. Yeah, you don't really want that. You're going to take uh, Spirit Fire instead, which is flows near your soul puppet. Now take 50% weapon damage. So basically, anytime your soul puppet is near a group of mobs, they're going to take 50% damage, weapon damage. Uh, next tier, we're going to take Warding Spirits. Uh, soul puppet active you do you take 10% less damage so see you're just stacking that damage resist against this is why you're so tanky you just keep stacking that damage resistance you're gonna take that over burning puppets uh, your soul puppet has 25% lesser curse yeah lesser curse not needed last two tiers you're gonna take both ghostly commander is uh, when you have a soul puppet of active you 10% more damage and life steal 2% more once again, survivability plus DPS. Can't go wrong with that. 5 out of 5 for Wrathful Souls. It's 100% more damage, and they now life steal for 15% of their damage, and it also heals you. Cannot pass that up. And finally, in the Damnation Tree, which is the end, is the Soul Desecration. Basically, just means your Soul Puppet is always active. Uh, he will die, but every 15 seconds, you'll always spawn a new one. He never goes away. Uh, we also oh, decided to take um, Into the Fury Paragon Tree, uh, Critical Promise, which isn't really that important, but after a critical hit, your next attack will also deal 10% of your weapon damage. Not a big deal, but it does add to a little DPS. This is why we go into the Fury. Is um, Your soul sparks also increase your damage by 0.3 per spark. You get... 30 sparks, I believe that's what, 9% damage increase. Uh, some people like to argue and come down here and they will not take uh, this one. They won't take Ghastly Commander, so they have 15 points left over and they will take these three here, which is Hope Stiller, not important. Uh, Vampiric Sparks, which just means your life still is increased. Not a big deal at all, it's garbage. Uh, but the main purpose down here is that uh, Dark Reverly gives you 20% uh, for 5 seconds. Uh, the reason that I did not go this way is because it is only for 5 seconds. Um, I do life steal all the time, so this would almost constantly be up for the 20 seconds. Um, but I've, I've tested it, I didn't like it. Um, I have other Warlocks that do use it, they seem to like it, I don't like it. Uh, this has worked out better for me, the 9% damage over the 20%. I know that sounds weird, but hey, it works. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> Alright, let's move into the powers real quick. Right off the bat, your Dark Spire Aura, you should use this uh, just for the AP gain back. Um, it is up to you if you want to use it. I currently do not use it. Um, I use a different power, but every once in a while I do switch to it. Uh, but my, like I said before, my action points gain is huge. My action point gain is huge. I don't really need it. Let's move on to what I do use, however. As far as your at wills, Essence Defiler, obviously it's your main spark generator. You're going to cast this non-stop. Uh, if you look, it says that it only does 198 physical damage, and it's a melee. It's it's not. It doesn't work like that at all. Um, my Essence Defiler actually hits for over, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80. I've even crit for 100k just with my at will with my Essence Defiler. So don't pay too much attention to the uh, 198 physical damage on this. Now the other uh, at will I'm using is the Hand of Light. Um, it does do decent damage. Um, it, if you're in melee range, it will just demolish people. And since you're going to have aggro, if you're in a group of trash mobs, you can just mow them down with this at will alone. Uh, it does give them a damage reduction as well, I believe, on like the third cast or something. It does a great deal of damage. Um, as far as encounter powers, we are going to be using Dread Theft, which... Basically, it's just a laser beam. You, you summon a laser beam and just mow down everything. Dread Theft plus Tyrannical Threat equals a whole lot of dead people. Okay? That's one of your bread and butters. Uh, a lot of Warlocks won't even use it. I'm not sure why. That's silly. Use it. Let's move on to the number one DPS. is your Soul Scorch. Uh, you will use Soul Scorch... Basically all the time, as soon as you get full sparks, you want to think about using them, depending on the situation and the boss fight and when your Tyrannical is up. 
Last but not least, I chose Warlock's Bargain. A lot of people were using Hadar's Grasps. I never got into it. Uh, Hadar's Grasps was nerfed. Um, it doesn't nearly do what it used to do, put it that way. A lot of Fury builds are using Blades of the Vanquished Armies. Uh, tried it out when I was a Fury. Nah, didn't really like it. It has its, it has its ups and downs. Uh, I didn't like it overall. I still choose Warlock's Bargain overall. Uh, and that's basically uh, damage plus life still. Can't can't beat it. Pop it all the time. As soon as it's up, pop it. And as I've mentioned before, your dailies are going to be the spirits, which I like to call them the little football team. Uh, summons two spirits, does shit ton of damage. Can't really pass it up. Does a lot of damage and it lasts a good bit of time. Um, I wouldn't recommend using it on a boss fight. You're always going to want to use your tyrannical. Like, no doubt about it. You want to use your Tyrannical threat. Um, I know Tyrannical in the description is a little hard to understand, but Tyrannical does work on single target, guys. Okay, I cannot stress that enough. Um, when you're in a group and you're doing Castle Never or something and you pull a big group of enemies and you pop your Tyrannical and the damage branches off to everything and your damage is increased, that's how it's supposed to work. But when you use Tyrannical on a single monster or a single mob or a single boss, your damage is still increased. Okay? Remember that. You should always use Tyrannical. Hands down. It will increase your damage. You will pop Tyrannical, um, pop your Soul Scorches. If you got full uh, uh, Soul Spirits, you will see big numbers. Okay? Guaranteed. Let's go move on to the uh, personals here. We got Borrowed Time, which is basically uh, whenever you have Soul Sparks, they're going to heal you for like 0.8% or something. It's nothing huge, but it, it helps, um, which also goes hand in hand with Dust to Dust. Uh, your, soul your Soul Sparks heal you when they heal you. They also generate 0.8 of your uh, maximum AP, and that also goes up with force. Um, so with all those that I mentioned, you want to max all those out. You want to get them all to rank 4. As you can see, I'm missing one power point. I don't have my Hand of Blight to rank 4, but everything else I do have to rank 4. Uh, that's basically all the powers you need. Everything else is pretty much garbage, okay? Uh, Killing Flames is, you know, obviously the bread and butter for a Fury, but we're not Fury. We're a damnation. We don't use it. We don't care about it. Uh, most of your DPS is definitely going to be Soul Scorch, Dread Theft, and Tyrannical combinations. Hopefully that covers the spells. Uh, you know, there are a little alternatives that you can do, but I would mainly stick to what I just used right there. Let's quickly move on to the boons and go through the boons. Um, Sharndar, uh, 400 power, 400 crit, 3% action point gain. Uh, 20k arcane damage and elvish fury 135 power 445 seconds and it stacks up to 30 times okay basically you want to go the whole minimum middle row right here it's all you want bam done dread ring let's go 250 critical I took the critical over the power because I need the critical because I stack power and enchantments. You may take the power over the critical. This is up to you right here. I went critical. Life still over regen. Who gives a shit about regen? 3% uh, resistance ignored, which stacks on top of your armor pen. So yes, take it. Because uh, deflect, you don't need the deflect. Uh, enraged regrowth. Uh, this is a hill. We already life still. We don't care about hills. We want the 20k necro damage over a few seconds, all day, every day. Dread ring. Bam. Rampaging madness. Money. Take it. Don't even look at the other ones. Whenever you get 50 stacks, so whenever you attack something 50 times, you will get 50 stacks. Then you will get madness. You'll gain 4,000 power, 4,000 lifestyle, and 4,000 regeneration for 10 seconds. Cannot pass it up. 4,000 power, 4,000 lifestyle. That is sexy. Yes, rampaging madness all day, every day. Ice Windell, nothing really important here. Uh, combat advantage over AoE. Uh, incoming healing bonus just because that helps with your own personal life still you'll get healed for more over stamina game who cares about stamina 
2% uh, crit severity. It doesn't even matter what this one is. It's 400 recovery, but it doesn't even matter what this one is because crit severity, uh, yes, definitely need it. Increases your overall crit. So, you know, your crit is your bread and butter. You want to crit as often as you can, and this will increase the damage of those crits. So 2%, absolutely. All right, 2,000 power based on how much stamina you are missing. Now this, you have to kind of make sure you're doing. Every time you're full stamina, uh, dodge. Just dodge them. Even if you don't need to dodge something, make sure your stamina is empty because you're going to get a 2,000 power increase, okay? So just make sure you're always uh, gliding around, you know? Be a pretty princess, glide around. No big deal. Which is going to take over... Uh, something about damage we don't we don't care about this you want the you want the 2000 power hands down all right now winter's bounty okay chance to gain bonus 10 percent action points when killing a target okay every time you kill a target you have a chance to gain 10 percent action points absolutely want this okay i've seen people take avalanche which you know is all fun and games but it's only 15k damage that is insignificant to the amount of damage you will do with your tyrannical threat combos. So, a chance to gain 10% action point when killing any target, you're killing trash mobs, bam. That procs, my winner's bounty procs quite often. You definitely want to get this. Underdark, we're going with the uh, 400 power and HP over the defense. We got the critical and HP over the life still. Uh, we got the combat advantage by 10% over the regeneration. As I said, regeneration we don't give a shit about. We are, we're we're going to life still, so we don't need regeneration. Uh, stamina 5% faster. I know I literally just said a few seconds ago you all, always want to burn your stamina, but I mean this way you do gain it a little, little faster, so when you're an epic Demogorgon or something you need to glide around nonstop. Uh, the stamina will help you as long as you're gaining it a little back, you know. It's no big deal. And it's over control effects, which are no big deal. Control effects, who cares? You're going to be rooted for a few seconds compared to the 5% gain you're going to gain back. And then finally, you're going to take the 10% uh, damage overall to demons. These other ones are insignificant for the most part you know chance to slay lesser demons yeah no one really cares uh demons do five percent less damage to you would be okay but there doesn't seem to be enough demons in the world to make this worthwhile i guess i rather do the 10 percent more damage to them than than rather take five percent less damage from them uh, like i said you're already a tanky build you're not going to need it and then up here is the uh, 25 percent control bonus versus demons well we don't really have anything to do with control bonuses as it is so uh yes definitely take the 10 percent to demons tyranny of dragons yippee skippy 400 power absolutely 400 critical absolutely 400 armor pen no doubt about it and then we got the 400 life still over the regen again and then of course the last one is the crit severity of course it's five percent and then the second and third tier is 6.5 and eight percent which unfortunately i don't have i'm a little more than halfway to getting the second one i mean it is a long grind you really do have to grind out those lanus favor uh, they did make Tiamat easier, so it is easier to get the, the Lanus Favor, uh, but it does take a lot of them. You need 30 Lanus Favor just to get the second one, and you need another 50 Lanus Favor on top of that to get the 8%. But yes, I will have this eventually. It's just a matter of time. Uh, stronghold, if you're lucky enough to be in a guild, you definitely want the uh, Power Boon in here. Ours is rank 3. I don't know how much I'm getting. Uh, like 6,000 power from this or something. Uh, defense, you can uh, either go for defense, but obviously lifesteal. Uh, yes, take the lifesteal. Uh, utility doesn't matter. You know, Either mount speed or XP bonus. Depends if you need uh, more power points. Uh, PvP, I don't do. This is a PvE build. Don't give a shit about PvP. And let's move on to the newer stuff, the maze engine. We're going to take the uh, lifesteal severity, 5%. Uh, combat advantage. Uh, action point gain, 3%. Again, can't pass it up. Uh, okay, so Baphomet's Might. When striking a foe, you have a chance to gain 2,000 critical strike for 6 seconds. Uh, this actually procs fairly often. I get this quite a bit. So 2,000 to your crit strike, absolutely. You have to have it. Get it. 
and the newest, the Elemental Evil. Now, I got grandfathered into Elemental Evil. I had all this done, so I got all of this instantly. If you guys are still working on your Elemental Evil, um, get it done when you can. I mean, there's nothing too important as far as the boons go. I mean, they're okay, but there's nothing super outrageous that you need to get as soon as possible. So, uh, 300 power and 2k hit points over the defense. 4% life steal severity and another 2k over the regen. Uh, 400 critical and another 2k hit points over the 400 recovery. Uh, this is hit or miss. If you are already, if you're to the point where you have enough critical and you don't need the 400 critical, you can get the 400 recovery, uh, which will make you cast faster. But I went with the critical. I want as much crit as I can. Uh, you know, I want to get to 100% if I can, you know. And then finally, we got the Gale of Retribution, which is when taking damage, you have a chance to heal up to 24k hit points over a few seconds. After this effect ends, your critical strike is increased by 1,000. So I don't care about the heal because I have such a high lifesteal that I self-heal non-stop. But after this, you get another 1,000 crit. So that's pretty important. You always want to get that crit. I believe that is all for the boons. Let's move on to your companions. Right off the bat, my uh, legendary is going to be the Shadow Demon. I like him. He hits a lot. He has a very short cooldown. Um, I will be changing from him once the Bonding Stone patch comes to the game. I will not be using him anymore, but for right now, I am using him. You want to, of course, get rank 12 Rune Stones on him as soon as possible. Uh, and for right now, I'm using the adorable gear with uh, more power, rank uh, rank 12 radiance and all of these to stack the power. As you can see, I have uh, rank 7s in the defense slots for lifesteal. I already have a shit ton of lifesteal, don't need any more lifesteal. And once I do change to my new companion, which I will go over, um, they're going to be double offensive slots anyway, so I'm going to need more... Uh, radiance or Azores um, but anyway so this is your legendary companion for right now uh, nothing really too special about him honestly he hits fast he hits hard uh, that's the only reason I like him over uh, some people use the uh, warlock some people use the uh, mercenary both viable legendary pets I just prefer the shadow demon I've seen my shadow demon actually crit for over a million with his uh, backstab ability uh, can't pass it up. I, I like it. Uh, as your other ones, we're going to go with the Fire Archon for the 7% increased damage to targets with, that have less than 50% HP, which also stacks with your Racial Ability. Remember, you get 5% from your Racial Ability from monsters that are already under 50%. Well, this is another 7% on top of that. Also, I'm going to use the Air Archon, which is... Another 5% damage for any mob that has taken any damage. So as long as you do one damage to a mob, this guy will trigger. For the next one, I have the Aaron Yes of Belial, I believe she's called, if I remember correctly. And at Epic, she gives you 10% crit severity. Cannot pass it up, get it. And then finally, I'm using the Siege Master. Uh, which is a 4% increase damage overall. And then it's also an 8% damage overall increase when I'm on the Stronghold. So when I'm doing like the uh, Stronghold Dragons or if I'm farming my influence or whatever. Um, as long as I'm in the Stronghold I do 8% more damage. And it is, it is noticeable. I can clearly see that I do more damage in the Stronghold than um, in a different map. Um, so very quickly when they do change the Bonding Stones... Um, I'm going to switch over to the fire icon. Okay, you heard this first. This is going to be your go to pet. I guarantee it. Um, basically, what they're doing to the bonding stones is, is that all three of these are going to proc at once instead of uh, popping individually. So, you're going to get all of your stats um, once uh, for 20 seconds, I believe, before it refreshes. Um, so with this guy, he's still going to cast fast enough that I'm still going to get my bonding stone procs. Um, fairly quick and fairly easy. Uh, the reason I'm going to switch to this uh, Fire Archon is he does have the three offensive slots for the bondings, uh, and he has two rings, ring slots and a talisman slot. 
Uh, so each ring, I'm going to be getting the adorable bites, of course. They're a little expensive right now. I believe they're 2.4 um, mil each on Xbox, and the Talisman's actually about 3.5 million. Uh, but the ring has double offensive slots, the Talisman has double offensive slot, and the ring has, uh, like I said, double offensive slots. So instead of having the life still over here anymore, I'm actually going to have three Radiants and three Azores. I should be able to get this guy up to um well over 6k power i mean i have 6k power already on the one i'm using so i should get this guy up to at least over 6k power and probably around 3 to 4k crit so yeah my my companion will be a monster eventually and then i'm gonna probably stop using this i might put in a uh young yeti it's a good uh companion to have the yeti um there's a few other ones that I've been toying around with. Uh, possibly, uh, there. I, I believe. What's it called? He's. Uh, I believe he's in the Wondrous Bazaar here. Let's look here real quick. Yeah, the Dancing Blade is also crit severity. You can also use this if you want to spend the diamonds to get it. Uh, crit severity. I'll probably end up getting a Yeti just because I do get hit a lot, so it should be proccing a lot. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for the companions, I believe. Let's move on to the mounts. Now, the mounts are a little tricky. Okay, first of all and foremost, you can see that this top one here. Okay, I'm reserving him for a legendary. I have to get a legendary. Uh, the summer event is coming up. Uh, you have a chance to get a Tenzer's disc out of that, and I plan on farming it very, very much until I get a Tenzer's disc. Uh, but this is a basic setup for any DPS class that you're going to want. Uh, Protector's Friendship. 1% of your power and defense for 10 seconds stacks up to 4 times. Uh, the Protector's uh, Camaraderie is 3.5% of your power and defense for 10 seconds up to 4 times. As you can see, I actually have two of these. They do stack, but you get a diminishing return. So one of these is going to give me 3.5. This one's only going to give me 3%. But they still stack, okay? So that's 3.5% times 4 plus 3% times 4. I've tested it, it works, do it. And then as you can see here, I have the uh, Calvary's Warning. It's uh, whenever you activate a mountain combat power, you gain 10% power, recovery, armor, pen, crit, defense, deflection, regen, and life steal. Basically every stat, basically every stat you're gonna get a 10% increase when you pop a um, mount combat power. Now the only mounts that have a combat power are legendary mounts and I prefer to get the uh, Tenzer's disc which will go into this slot. Now as far as your insignias go, you want to get all purples. I mean I'm working on it. I have two purples right now. Uh, you want to get the prosperity ones for the HP for your regals. Okay, I need another purple one here. I have a blue one. Uh, now, for right now, I have an aggression one, but I would like to get a possible skill. I would like to get all purple skills, but then the more I thought about it, uh, the aggression is 200 armor pen. So if I do decide to switch to the Orca set, I can make up a little bit of that armor pen just from the insignias. So you figure right here, I have one, two, three, four. I have four, four barbed. So each one is 200, right? That's 800 armor pen that I can gain back uh, just from the mounts. Now keep in mind, if I change to the Orca set, I'm going to lose a little over 2,000 armor pen. Well, I'll be able to gain 800 back just from the mounts. So I will test things out, but for right now, I mean, I like my setup. I do do a lot of damage. I believe that's it, to be honest. There hasn't really been an updated Warlock build in quite some time, I believe since Mod 6. I wanted to get this one out there. Uh, this video is a little long. I really hope you guys stuck with it. You know, I hope you stuck with it. I, I hope you learned how to, uh, you know, play a Warlock, basically. Um, I'm gonna go down here and just kill some of these things fairly quickly. I'll show you my damage. We are in the Well of Dragons. Just want to target all these, pop your Warlock's Bargain, and I can kill these with just that wills. Like, look at my damage. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Here, I'll uh, pop a couple Soul Scorches on this guy here. Warlock's Bargain again, and just mowing them down. Mowing them down. 
Let's pop my Tyrannical. I'll show you what that looks like. So you want to pop your Tyrannical. Remember to dodge out of red at all costs. Of course, you know. I hate them when I cast an air effects, but I mean, like, these guys can't can't even hit me. Like, look, watch, I'll sit here and tank these guys. Every time they hit me, I just life steal it back. Can't even touch me. Oh, here's one little guy left. So, that's that's it, guys. Um, if you enjoy the warlock, uh, be sure to Leave me any questions in the comments, uh, send me a message. Uh, this is an Xbox build, by the way. Things are a little different on PC. Uh, PC is a little ahead of Xbox. Some things on PC work differently than Xbox. I'm going to have to leave this video where it's at now. Um, hopefully you guys liked it. Like I said, if you do have any questions with the Warlock, uh, I'm more than willing to discuss it with you. Uh, post it in the comments below. Uh, I'm gonna have to end it there guys. Thank you. I really appreciate all the support recently. Uh, big shout out to Captain Spicy Pants again. Uh, he's been helping me a lot. And I will see you guys in the next video.